Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another problem dealing with distance, speed, and time for a little extra practice. So let's say we have a runner that can run at 6 miles per hour, and we have a biker that can bike at 16 miles per hour. And let's say that the biker leaves, uh, let's see, a 1 hour and 24 minutes after the runner has gotten his head start. And the question is, how far will the runner travel before the biker catches him? All right, how do we do that? Well, there's a couple principles. First, you want to let something be represented by x, and maybe we want to represent the time spent by the biker traveling, because the biker is going to spend less time traveling. So let x equal the time for the biker. And then we have to represent the amount of time that the runner will be on the road. Well, since the biker leaves an hour and 24 minutes later, that means the uh, runner will be an hour and 24 minutes long around the road. Let's change it into a decimal because uh, 24 minutes, what is that as a fraction of an hour? And so we can say that 24 divided by 60 is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, that would be 2 fifths, which is equal to 0 0.4. So we can uh, substitute for an hour and 24 minutes, we can call that 1.4 hours. So in that case, the amount of time that the runner stays on the road will be x, the amount of time for the bike, plus 1.4 hours. So x plus 1.4 equals the time for the runner. Okay, now the principle here is that when, they, when the biker finally catches the runner, they will have covered the same amount of distance. So the distance uh, covered by the runner must equal to the distance covered by the biker. And that's how we're going to work out this problem. And then, of course, you have to realize that distance equals velocity times time. So in this case, the speed of the runner times the time of the runner is equal to the speed of the biker times the time of the biker. So the speed of the runner is 6 miles per hour, and the time for the runner would be x. That equals the speed of the bike, which is 16, times the time for the bike, which would be, oh, no, no, I got this wrong here. The runner spends more time. That's the biker. The runner spends more time on the road, so I want 6 times x plus 1.4 and 16 times x. That's the most appropriate one, right? Because the runner spends more time on the road than the biker. All right, now we have to solve this equation for x. And so let's get, go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. 6x plus 6 times that would be 8.4 equals 16x. Moving all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other. So we have 6x minus 16x equals minus 8.4. So minus 10x equals minus 8.4, dividing both sides by the coefficient, minus 10. That gives us x is equal to 0 0.84. OK, 0 0.84, x is the time for the biker. So that would be 0 0.84 hours on the road for the biker. So from that, we can figure out how far the biker will have traveled before catching the runner. And so since you know that distance equals velocity times time, and for the biker the velocity is 16 uh, miles per hour times the time is 0 0.84. And let me get a calculator out for that. So we have 16 times 0 0.84 equals, and that would be 13.44 miles. And that would be the distance covered by the biker before catching the runner, and that, of course, must be the distance the runner traveled. That's quite a run. That's slightly over a half a marathon. So that's a, a good run for this runner. Now, if you want to make sure we did this correctly, let's use the distance equals velocity times time for the runner and see if we get the same result. So distance equals velocity times time for the runner, which would be 6 miles an hour times, uh, let's see here, uh, x plus 1.4, x is 0 0.84 plus 1.4, and let's see if that gives us the same result. So 1.4, add that to 0 0.84, and then multiply it times 6, and sure enough, we get the same result, 13.44 miles, and that means we did the problem correctly. All right, and that's how we do that.